Welcome back to the OOP PHP series. If you're following this series, you know that in the last video, we just uh, auto loaded our classes. We are using uh, two different classes to display all these. And if we go at the back end, we should see that now our classes are organized by folders. Instead of loading each classes one by one, we are calling one function, which is a class loader. This guy to be exact, and um, and just by loading this one function, all our classes are being auto loaded. But this time, we're going to stop that. We are going to do everything like the big boys do using Composer. But first, let's see what happens once we disable it. Let's go back, refresh, and all is broken as it should be. And here, if I load my terminal, let's make it larger. And if I type in composer here, as you can see, it loads up. That means we have composer installs. This is a Windows platform. It's very simple to uh, install composer. Let me show you. I'm just going to go through a little bit for with you even though I installed it myself just go to com composer.org and then sorry get composer.org and then download and at the very beginning you'll see Windows installer and just by clicking this you will be able to download that file right here and I'm not going to reinstall it, but I'm going to go through some of the step with you by double clicking it. Install for all users. So from here, I have to show you something. I am using the MAMP for Windows, right? So if we click next, this is the part I wanted to show. It's picking up on the location of my PHP file, right? But it's not automatic. What I had to do, I had to go browse and go find the C drive where I have MAMP right here and dig down to the bin folder and find PHP and go all the way down to PHP 741 and then open. Select and open. And that's how it got loaded up. But up to here, what I needed to show you, but if you do the rest, it's just the next next is just gonna simply install everything right so i'm going to cancel out and we're going to you know since i've already installed it i'm not going to go through that again now let's go back okay so now that we know our com composer is installed so i'm going to do a cls here okay just remember if you're going to be starting a composer.json file using composer.init you have to be inside that specific theme folder so that everything falls right in place because if you see here it's app public and then wp content blah 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 right so it depends on how your folder structure looks like just go to your theme folder as we are here this is our theme folder and now we're going to go ahead and run composer in it this is basically will initiate the composer.json file, hit enter, we're ready to go. And at this point, you don't have to really do anything, just keep hitting enter. Dependencies, yes. Package, no. Not really. Okay, now at this point, when it's asking you PSR4 auto load mapping, here we have to write down our correct folder, which is underscore classes forward slash. Basically, this is what I mean. Under this folder, we're going to have all our classes auto loaded from, and PSR4 is basically the international standard for 
PHP writing. I mean, there are PSR 1, 2, and this PSR 4 specifically for auto loading. And we'll get to that in much more detail because this is going to be very important when we do our namespacing, right? So let's hit enter. All right. So it's actually showing us what our composer.json would look like. It looks great. We hit enter. Would you like the vendor directory added? Yes, of course. And now this is very important at this point, you know, it is actually telling you that it's going to be using namespaces, etc. using PSR4 standard, but don't worry too much. We're going to go ahead and manually edit our composer.json file. But at this point, we know that we have our composer ready to go. Let's get out of here and find our composer.json file. And this is what it looks like. So the important part is here. What it, what's happening here is this is the name, you know, initial namespace. This is what, if you don't make any changes, this is what composer is going to use as the beginning namespace. But it looks pretty huge, right? I mean, we don't really need all that. So what we're going to do, we're going to alter it a little and just go with cyber because the, the company I work for is Cyberize Group. So let's just stick to that. OK, so just whenever we say cyber, it means this folder right here, underscore classes folder. Just remember that, right? So let's save that. And this is our composer.json file. So now our front end is failing, right? Let's check it out one more time. Yes, everything is still failing. And uh, reason being, that we have our functions file, all the classes auto loaded, auto loading is disabled. So now that we set up our composer.json file, and it looks like that, the PSR4 one. So now, according to the PSR4 standard, we're going to rename our folders and class names. See, these lowercase folder names are not going to work right so we're going to change it to uppercase like this and basically all the class names has to be changed also and they need to be pascal cased no underscore business right because that way composer will show error and uh, the beauty of it is that we no longer have to use any prefixes our name spacing will always take care of everything so this and let's get rid of all the underscores. This is called Pascal casing, which is where uh, let the letter, first letter of every word will be uppercased, right? So let's change this one also. Get rid of the prefix. It's already like that, so it's nice. But if we change this, we're gonna have to change our actual class name also. Save that here. Let's get rid of this. Save that. OK, so our classes and the folder structures are ready. But to, we have to set up our namespacing. This is the way we're going to do it. Just type in namespace and Remember cyber right here. So we're going to have to say cyber backslash and the folder name, right? The test folder. That's it. Sorry, the semicolon missing here. All right. So right on top of our each class, we have to define the namespace like this, the beginning, the cyber word means this folder. And then whatever folder the actual class is in, like this, this test folder, we just have to mention that folder on top. So let's fix util. Namespace, cyber, 
backslash it is under utils folder save that so now our classes are ready at this point we're going to go ahead and make changes to our template because now that all those class names have changed so this is the, our template where everything is coming from this guy right here so I'm going to go ahead and make the necessary changes and come back. Okay, so I'm back after making the necessary changes. I didn't want you to uh, sit through when I make all these uh, tiny bit changes. But as you can see, basically I just put the right class names in there instead of the ones with, uh, with the prefixes. I removed those and one small little thing I've done is added these two lines. Basically, the namespaces that we set, I mean, like right here, we told that Cyber would be our default class folder. And in our classes, we told them that this would be the folder where our classes will reside in both cases, util and test, right? So in here, we're just going to say, now that we used our namespace, we set our namespace, we're going to be using them right here. So the two classes that we're loading right here, we're going to say use and our full path of the namespace and the class name. Now, alternatively, you can actually use take this part and write in front of every class. But then what happens is you're going to have to put that in front of every little time that the class has been used. So that could be tedious, right? These two lines saves us from doing all that. Just two lines telling the template where, the, where to find the classes. And that, after that being done, one little thing we have to do is go back here and add this following. Now this one line will take care of all the auto loading of the classes. But when you do the first time, when you first time set this up, you're gonna have to run one more command though. So let's go to terminal. Actually, let's go to the one we already there under our um, theme folder. Here we're gonna go ahead and type, oh, sorry, here, composer, dump dash auto load you have to do this just the first time and hit enter and boom it will tell you that it generated all the auto load and classes and what's going what this is going to do is basically activate this guy and just to explain this a little bit is if we go here you can see that composer created a vendor folder and inside that it created this autoload.php. Now this one, if you look into it, uh, it's pretty much gibberish, right? It's automatically created, so don't touch this one. We don't have anything to do with this. Only thing we do is take care of this composer.json file and make the necessary changes like rename our folders and classes and class file names according to PSR4 standard, which is Pascal casing, right? So once these are in place and we already used the use classes with the uh, namespaces and just to make sure inside our classes, we did also use this namespace. So when all these things are in line, it may look a lot of work right now, but trust me, when your number of classes grow to, you know, 20, 30, 50, 100, and you will feel much better knowing that you did this. No more single class loading like this, no more extra prefixes, and, you know, extra code for uh, folder structure, none of that. Just this one simple line, and right after this command, let's go check it out, what's happening at the front end as it was before broken right so let's refresh bada bing bada boom there you go everything just as they were
And this is how big boys write the code. And now we know also how to do this. So which means at this point, we can just go ahead and keep adding folders to it, you know, according to necessity and put all the classes necessary, you know, use inheritance, this, that, the other, and never worry about loading a class file again. So that ends this video. If you like this, please smash the like button and please don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please smash the like button and the subscribe button. This will help me bring more free contents like this to you every week. Thanks again.